SpaceX has successfully destroyed a Starship test tank for the fourth time, opening the door for the first high-altitude prototype to roll to the launch pad as soon as tomorrow. The culmination of three nights and more than 20 hours of concerted effort, SpaceX was finally able to fill Starship test tank SN7.1 with several hundred tons of liquid nitrogen before dawn on September 23rd. With just an hour left in the day's test window, SpaceX closed the tank's vents, allowing its cryogenic contents to boil into gas and expand with no outlet. At 4.57 a.m. CDT, SN7.1 burst, bringing its lengthy test campaign to a decisive end. A handful of hours later, new road closure notices revealed SpaceX's plan to roll Starship SN8, the first full-size prototype and first shipment for high-altitude testing, from its Boca Chica factory to the launch site. All road closures planned for Starship SN8's roll to the launch pad, SEPT-24, and first test campaign, SEPT-27-29, have been cancelled. Stay tuned for updates on the high-altitude prototypes test schedule. Short of new information from SpaceX or CEO Elon Musk, little is known about the results of SN7.1's lengthy test campaign, but the fact that it survived two nights of non-destructive testing, including the use of hydraulic rams to simulate raptor thrust, effectively clears Starship SN8 for suborbital testing. Based on a speculative, amateur analysis of the aftermath of SN7.1's burst test, it can also be tentatively concluded that the tank failed almost exactly where one would expect it to, the in-situ weld attaching the upper tank dome to SN7.1's steel ring hull. SN7.1's forward dome appears to have cleanly sheared off around much of its circumferential weld joint, exactly what one would theoretically expect from a good, uniform weld. Assuming that SN7.1 reached pressures well above 8.5 bar, tilde 125 pounds per square inch, before it burst, the tank's final test can likely be deemed a success. The very same day SpaceX kicked off what would become Starship SN7.1's last burst test attempt, teams worked to install functional flaps on a full-scale Starship prototype, SN8, for the first time ever. Effectively answering the question of whether SpaceX would fully outfit the ship with a nose cone and flaps before its first acceptance tests, SN7.1's successful pop was followed by road closure notices for SN8's transport to the launch pad around dawn on September 24 and cryptic SN8 testing as early as September 27. As of September 23, SN8's twin aft flaps, large aerodynamic control surfaces meant to stabilize free falling starships, have been fully installed alongside aero covers that will protect each flap's control mechanisms. The only hardware starship SN8 is missing is a tilde 20 meters, tilde 60 feet, tall nose cone, two smaller forward flaps, and the plumbing needed to access a smaller liquid oxygen header tank located in the tip of said nose. At the moment, SpaceX has installed one Starship nose cone prototype atop five unpressurized rings, creating a full nose cone stack. That particular prototype has no liquid oxygen header tank, however, meaning that SpaceX would likely need at least a day or two to weld one of the noses with a header tank atop one of several finished five ring sections. In other words, to transport SN8 to the pad tomorrow, there's almost no chance that SpaceX will have time to finish and install a proper nose cone on the prototype, meaning that the company has chosen to test the Starship before that milestone. Doing so should reduce any inconvenience caused by vehicle failure in the event that Starship SN8's acceptance test campaign doesn't go as planned. In hindsight, the inclusion of Starship SN8 soft flaps and aero covers during the ship's first major tests was likely a necessity, given that almost half of each flap and its support structure is installed directly to the skin of its liquid oxygen tank. Theoretically, when chilled to the temperature of liquid nitrogen or oxygen, the diameter of the stainless steel rings Starship SN8 is built out of could shrink by as much as 0.3%, tilde 20 mm or 0.8 in. Only half of Starship SN8's aft flaps will be directly subject to that tank contraction, 
resulting in a relatively complex environment for such a large, high-stress mechanical system. As such, testing flap actuation under cryogenic loads is likely a critical part of SN8's cryogenic proof test, otherwise meant to demonstrate the structural integrity and functionality of Starship's propellant tanks. If SN8 rolls to SpaceX's launch facilities on schedule, the Starship's first cryogenic proof test could begin as early as 9 p.m. CDT, UTC-5, on Sunday, September 27. Should SN8's test flight result in a crater, as Elon put it, corrective actions will be employed into SN9, which is already into the business end of its stacking operations. With processing taking place next to SN8 in the mid-bay, SN9 will mimic SN8's design, similar to how SN5 and SN6 closely resembled each other. On Sunday, SN9's forward dome rolled out of one of the big tent production buildings to prepare for stacking in the mid-bay. Earlier in the week, the landing legs were installed on its aft skirt. It is yet to be seen if SN9 will complete stacking operations before SN8 is rolled to the launch pad. Regardless, SN9 won't be on her own for long if SN8 departs the mid-bay, with sections for Starship SN10 now being staged outside the big tents in preparation for stacking operations. As of Sunday, the common dome section for SN10 was spotted outside of one of the big tents by Mary, at Boca Chicago. This marks at least three full-scale Starship prototypes that have completed sections already constructed. However, it is almost certain there are bulkheads inside the production buildings for Starships further down the running order. Parts for SN11 were spotted on one truck delivery earlier this month, including a downcomer and a thrust puck. This was followed by another delivery of a downcomer, thrust puck, and legs, and a third delivery just days ago. This holds the exciting prospect that SpaceX Boca Chica already has hardware for Starships up to SN13. While that may appear crazy, this observation does align with Elon's cited goal of a high production rate, allowing, for fast iteration, enabling the freedom for the SpaceX teams to push through numerous test objectives in the knowledge that any failure will not result in a significant impact on the test schedule. Although super heavy hardware, at least steel with SH written on labels, remains elusive to Mary's lenses, the super heavy launch mount that will host the dual Raptor prototype booster is continuing to make progress. Sheathing of the rebar tubes on the base of the mount is now complete as engineers prepare to move on to the next phase of construction. A huge LOX tank was also delivered to the launch site during the week, allowing for the tank farm to grow in capacity as will be required for the next phase of the test program. It's highly likely that additional storage tanks will be installed at the launch site over the coming weeks, primarily to cater to the additional liquid methane and liquid oxygen storage capacity requirements.